That's great. That's great. That's great. So tonight I'm here together with Doblight FX. I bring to you Forex terminologies because yesterday we had the introduction to Forex, yes, by our chat goddess herself. And today I bring to you Forex terminologies. And my name is Ali Abubakar Debshima. Okay. As I said, my name is Ali Abubakar Debshima. I've got several years of experience studying flow diagrams and circuit systems, which was uh, in the engineering field, because I was also yes in the engineering field. And currently I am in the engineering field. I've got a Forex apprenticeship program. I'm a Forex apprenticeship program graduate with expert knowledge in technical analysis. And now I am a team member at Doblight FX, Hedge Fund Africa, and an envoy lead to Northern Africa. So I believe you can all see my slide, guys, before we jump into business. So this is, in a nutshell, my profile. You can see my name at the top, Ali Abakar Tevshima. And next, this is me presenting to you the Watch Me As I Do It series, brought to you by the village headmaster himself, CEO of Light FX, yes. And you can see these are my colleagues, Joelito, Joelito, the chat goddess, which we had a class yesterday, it was wonderful. We have Femi Yusuf, you will also experience more from him and Joelito next time. That's cool. Now let's get down to business. Kindly, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Drop a one, 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 so I can kick off with the table of contents. Okay, great. Now, tonight I'm talking of what? Forex terminologies. I believe that here we've got some who are already experienced and some are simply newbies. So I, I believe some are just hearing about Forex for the first time. Some are already experienced and are already trading as I can see most of my colleagues from the apprenticeship program are here. The reason why we are starting from the beginning is so that those who do not actually got the experience could catch up and those that have is it could be just like a refresher so no knowledge is a waste please no knowledge is actually a waste now my table of contents we are going to be talking of the pip the lots the acts the bid bid and acts and the spread the leverage we will talk of the margins the currency pairs long and short, what it means to have a long or short in the market. Some of these uh, terms, I believe by newbie traders, might, they might never have heard them, but it's going to serve as a solid foundation to our progress in this class. Yes, these classes are very busy, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't concentrate. Kindly, I believe that by now everyone has a pen and a paper because there might be some things that maybe wouldn't be on the slide which you'd like to take note of. Even I myself got my own pen and I've got my own, yes, my own notebook to write, write on. Now let's move to the first content, which is the pips. In the Forex market, you know, yesterday our chat goddess talked about what? the Forex market, she introduced the Forex market that it is a what, just like the way the blue the chains operate, those people that exchange uh, dollar to Naira, pounds to Euro, you understand? But this time around, everything is now digital. You don't need to take your money, you don't need to go out to the Aboki. Yes, that's how she referred it. That's how she referred them to, and that's actually perfect. So you don't need to go to those Abokis to actually change anything here, you are doing it over the counter. So PIP in the Forex market is a percentage in point. It is that smallest change in the movement or price of an asset. The smallest change 
in the movement of the price of an asset. So in the forex market, you can have, let's say, one dollar is equal to 498 naira. Let's say one naira movement is the smallest change that can occur in that market, maybe just one movement. So that's what we call the percentage in points. And it is also the 1% of 1% of a price, of price which is equal to 0 0.001, and it's also called price interest point. So what I just want you to note is that the PIP in a nutshell is simply the word, the smallest change in the price of an asset. And in our case, as we are dealing with the forex market, we say that it is the smallest change that occurs in the price of what? Our currency peer. I hope we can kind of understand this. Please let's understand this. The price, the PIP, which is the PIP, also known as percentage in points, is actually the smallest change in price the smallest change that can occur in the price of an asset in our case, which is what? Our currency assets. I hope we get that. Let me see a 111. Okay, that's great. That's great, Jerry, Ajiga. So we have Samuel Dixon, yes, we have the millions. Okay, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. So before I talk about this Euro AUD, this green and red arrows, I would like us to look at the chart I have for us next. Look at this chart. This chart is an is a Euro USD chart, the Euro and the United States dollars. By the side of this chart, we can actually see what by the side, which is by the right hand side, you can see some prices 1.22640, 1.22280. You can see those numbers by the sides. These are what respective what? Respective price of what? These assets, which is the USD. The, we can see Euro USD is quoted what against the Euro. So the right hand side is the exchange rate. This is the rate you require in order to obtain one euro. Now going back to the next slide, let's assume that you have your euro AUD to be what? 1.60353. And price is to move, make what? A PIP movement. I already told you that one, what one the PIP is what one percent of one percent of price, which is equal to zero point zero 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 one. So if we expect our current price to be one point six zero three five three, then one PIP movement in this price is going to be what, which is simply us adding one point six zero three five three plus 0 0.0001. Kindly, what is this going to give us? I would like this class to be interactive. It's for us to simply what? Add up this 1.60353 to 0 0.0001. It's already calculated. I think there's a, there's how they have, there's a way they got this, but I've just told you that the 1% of 1% of price, which is equal to our PIP, which is a percentage is for um, in points. Okay. I can see answers flowing in already. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yes. Samuel Dixon, you got it right. Okay. Let me see. I said we had 1.60353 plus 0 0.0001, which is going to give us 1.60363. Yes, 1.60363. Samuel Dixon, I don't know where you actually got this 30363 from. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. You are getting it right, guys. 
So if we now expect a pr this price of ours to make what? 10 pip movements. If I now expect my price to make a 10 pip movement, so it's going to be what? It's simply going to be this 0 0.0001 times 10, right? Times 10, which is going to be 0 0.0010 adding it to our 1.60353. Now let's add 1.60353 to 0 0.0010 to determine or confirm this 10 pip value that I have by the side. Please let's do so, let's do so. This is actually going to give me 1.60, uh-huh. 453, yes, 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 I can see, I can see. Mr. Ibulu, yes. Adefemi, I can see you. Deborah, I can see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, what we need to understand is that yesterday we talked of what? Uh, the chart goddess talked of currency peers. Yes. What I want us to understand is that prices of these respective currency pairs, you will always find them in what? Four decimal places. You'll find them in four decimal places. Just, okay, let's look at this. Let's look at this. We have our Euro AUD. Let me just look at my, my mouse. This is what? Euro AUD 1.60353. It's to what decimal place? One, two, three, four, five. It's to five decimal places. But then the peak value, actually, the peak value here is actually to the fourth decimal place. The fourth decimal place, the fourth number after the decimal point is always our peak, is what we give emphasis to. When price is changing, when price tends to make, change, make a change, a percentage change, we consider what the PIP value. The fifth value is called a point. We don't actually give emphasis to the fifth value. The fifth value is for precision, which is called the pipet. But the PIP, which is actually the standard what movement in price, the smallest standard change, an asset can make is the fourth number, that fourth number after the decimal place. When it's not so, all currency pairs you will find out. Let me go to the next chart. In this next chart, you can see this is Euro USD. By the right hand side, you can see it's what to how many decimal places? Five decimal places. The last fifth number there is called the pivot, which is called a fractional pip. It was actually uh due to competitive purposes, which is to enable for more accuracy. But our interest here is the PIP, which is actually the fourth number after the decimal place. That is our own interest. You will find out that most of, almost all our currency pairs are what? Have their PIPs, PIP value to the fourth decimal place, except all the Euro pairs, the USD pairs, the GBP pairs, you will see all the quoted pairs to what? Five decimal place, which is the PIP being at the fourth decimal place, except for our JPY pairs, which is our Japanese yen, as I'll be showing in my next chart. Just look at this, my next chart, you can see that it's what? Okay, can someone tell me what is the difference between this currency pair? We can see that this is, one, two, three, four. Okay, we can see that there's five numbers after the decimal places, and we can see for the USD JPY, we have what? Three numbers after the decimal places. So for any of our currency pairs that is pegged with the JPY, we will always find out that the JPY pairs, the Japanese yen pairs, are to what? Three decimal places. So if we say that what? If we say that for our Euro USD, our PIP is to be the fourth decimal place, and the last one is to be ignored, which is actually a fractional PIP, the PIPET. So, what do we say about this Japanese yen? I am going to tell you that for our Japanese yen, for the JPY PEG pairs, our PIP 
is expected to be what? The second number after the decimal. Look at the first number above. Let me take, let me take my, can you see my mouse at the top? Can you see my mouse at the top right here? At the top right corner, can you see this? 270, 110.270. Can you see this? Please drop a one. Kindly drop a one. Okay, good, 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 good. I can see. We are not interested in all any of the numbers as we are determining pips. We are not interested in numbers before the decimal place. We are only interested in the fourth digit after the decimal place for other currency codes, which is the euro that contains the euro, JP, euro USD, the GBP USD, and the likes. But our what? Our USD JPY pairs are what? Having what three digits after the decimal point, and the and the second digit is said to be our our what? Can someone type it? Our pip. So now, if I was going to say, let's now work this out. If there is a price change from one one zero point one three zero to a price change. 110 to 150. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wanko, I can see you. Thank you. Now let's look at a price change. 110 from 110.130. I am considering this aspect. Look at my mouse. This portion of the screen. This portion of the screen. If there's a price change from 110.130 to 110.150. And we want to determine our P. First and foremost, you chop off, you are, you are not interested in anything before the decimal place, which leaves us with 150.150 and 0 0.130. We said that our P is what? The second decimal place, which makes five minus three to be equal to what? Five minus three to be equal to what? Five minus three to be equal to what? Yes, two, which is two pips. Yes, thank you so much, Adefemi, I can see you. Patrick, I can see you. Mr. Ibulu, I can see you. Thank you so much, thank you so much. It's essential that we understand this concept of pip. I told you that this pip is actually the what? The smallest. Yes, movement that a price, the smallest change in price, the smallest standard change in price of our currency what assets or some other assets. But we are talking of forex, so we are talking of currencies. And I've actually shown you in a very simple format what I mean by the percentage in points. So any so okay. If the percentage of point in price is 0 0.0001 for a pip that is expected to be at the fourth decimal place, what do we say of the JPY pair? So what, are, what is the 1% of 1% of price for a JPY that has its pip to be at the word second decimal place? If this is for fourth decimal place, 0 0.0001, for four decimal place, what I, what do we consider for zero? Okay, what do we consider for JPY? What do we say about okay zero point zero one? Okay, zero point zero one. I can see you. Okay, Mr. Jerry. Yes, God's power. Yes. Okay, Dobra, Jimmy, Henry. No, 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 Mr. Ebulu. It can't be 0 0.001. You know, in our MetaTrader 4, which is our trading application, you will find out it is what? The, we have three numbers after the decimal place. The last number is actually the pipette, which is a fractional pip. It is for what? Accuracy. Is to, it was basically there to what? Ensure for more accuracy. But our interest is the standard movement in price, the smallest change a price can make for a certain asset, which is the PIP. And for other currency pairs, it is the fourth decimal place, but for JPY pairs, it is at what? The second decimal place. 
And not only that, I think even uh, crude oil itself is to the yes, second decimal place, silver as well. Yes, but we'll actually look at those later when we start the class formally. We've already seen this chart. This is the JPY example. So I believe that we understand the concept of PIPs. I told you that the PIP is the smallest what change in price of an asset, the standard smallest what change in price of what an asset that an asset can make. Then we have the fractional PIP, which is that PIP it, which I said it's for, I'm not going to actually um, talk about it because it's actually for accuracy purpose. Our interest is the PIP. So let's not go out of syllables. Kindly one, 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 if you understand, because there will be room for questions later. Two, if you don't understand. Let me see tools if you don't understand. One, if you've understood. Basically, it is what the smallest change in price an asset can make. That's just it. And I've given, given you the standard that it is a 1% of 1% of change in price. Please, can you go through the PIP solving again? Okay. Okay. Betty Lane. Betty Lane. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Apologies. Okay, I say that PIP is what? Okay, Betty. Okay, I call you Betty. I say that PIP is the percentage in points. Its full meaning is the percentage in points. Right, you understand it's a percentage in points, which is the smallest standard change in price of an asset that is the smallest change a price is a, a price a, an asset can make it's just like let, 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 let me use an example it's just like when let's say you are talking of whole numbers you are talking of whole numbers and you want to count to five you can't just keep from one and head to five it's not possible you must be sequential about it, which means you go from one, then a plus one. We are talking of whole numbers, which makes it two. You can't just go to four, or you can't just go to three, because it has to be a plus one to give us three. So in the Forex market, let's assume, okay, this is our Euro AUD example once again. I said we have 1.60353. One point six zero three five three. What is going to be a one percent change in this price? If this price was to move one pip, uh, kindly, uh, Betty, one a one one pip move in Euro AUD one point six zero three five three percent is going to be what one pip move? I told you that a pip is going to be one percent of one percent of price, which is 0 0.0001. I told you the fourth decimal place is what we are interested in. The fourth decimal place is what we are interested in. 0 0.0001, which is the change will occur in the fourth decimal place. That's why you can see all these zero zero zeros, but one. There, okay. So it's actually what? Yes, one point six zero three one uh -huh. okay three six three yes Betty you got that right you got that right so just look at this Did, I told you someone is now going to ask somebody is going to ask me later on or ask a question that okay but I said we're interested in the fourth how about the fifth the fifth is called a fractional pip Basically, it is there for what? Precision. It's a pipit. It is not actually a standard movement, what? A standard for a movement, the smallest standard movement in price. So what we tend to do is, at first, we tend to ignore it. When you are recalculating your pip, just at first, just imagine that that fifth number after the decimal point is not there. So we should just operate with what? One point. 
1.6035. That three at the end discarded. You are interested in the words standard smallest movement this price can actually make. Kindly do you understand? Because we need to understand this concept of pips. Because when we come, you that's where you hear somebody is telling you that I made a profit. He he he's okay. He's in a trade. He set his TP to about uh, ten pips, twenty pips, thirty pips. You should be able to what calculate this. Okay, now let's look at the second example. We have Betty. Can you? Are you? Are you? I do you understand? Let's look at the second example where we have one point six zero three five three. Once again, we have 1.60353, 1.60353. Okay, we haven't actually talked of uh, buys, longs, and shorts. Okay, no problem. Okay, so let me just give you the one, uh, Betty, and guys, kindly, I need us to now talk of the JPY. Let's say we have 110.130. What are you going to say is a one pip movement in this price to the upside? Yes, one pip movement, an increment, one pip increment. What do you say for 110.130? 110.130. First and foremost, we are not interested in the whole number before the decimal point. We are only interested in the word second digit after the decimal point. The third digit is actually a pipette. So first and foremost, just take 0.13. That's zero, close it. Yes, I can see. Okay, Betty, you are she got it right, she got it right. That's cool, that's cool. Yes, so basically, Betty, you can now say 110,000, 110,000, 110,000, 110,000, 110,000, of price for the JPY word, peg pairs. That means for those pairs that have three decimal places is now going to be what? Zero point, what? Zero one. Zero point zero one. One pip movement is going to be a plus zero point zero one for JPY peg pairs, and one pip pip movement is going to be zero point zero 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 one for other assets, for other currency assets. So what me I simply do is okay. If someone tells me okay. Uh, I should get 10 pips, T 10 pips of, uh, of Euro USD. What I'm simply going to do is just uh, 0 0.0001 in 10 places. You get, you get your answer and then you add it up to that exchange rate. I hope we understand this concept of pips. Please, I hope we do understand the concept of pips. One, 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 I can see time is going because it's highly sensitive that we understand the concept of pips. It's highly sensitive that we understand it. Though I can assure you that as we progress, you will get to understand it much better. One, 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 you understand? Betty, kindly, can I see a one if you've understood? That's cool. I've seen it. I've seen your one. That's great. I simply brought up this chart to actually show you. This is an Euro USD. You can see the right hand side how it would occur on your usual chart. You will see how it occurs on your usual chart. This is one point. Okay, two two six four zero. Don't allow it being five decimal places scare you. We are only interested in the fourth decimal place, which is actually, which actually determines your word PIP. So anytime you are calculating, you remove the whole number, just point then the numbers to the fourth decimal place. The fifth decimal place is a pipette, it's for precision. It doesn't affect your trading, that it doesn't affect your trading much. It doesn't, not at all, it doesn't. The next, this is our USD JPY. Even for our Euro JPY, you will find out even this USD JPY, JPY it's three decimal places. For Euro JPY, you will see it's three decimal places. NZD JPY, you will see it's for three decimal places. All the JPY pairs are three decimal places. Likewise, 
I think yes, crude oil itself. Yes, I think silver itself. Yes, exactly. So next, let's move to the next topic, which is our lot size. Our lot size. Our lot size, and we can, as we can see from our slide, is determined is said to be the unit of currency to be traded. Don't let the unit confuse you. I am simply saying that the volume. I'm simply talking of the volume of our currency, the currency to be traded the volume of currency to be traded. Let me go back to this slide now. Let me go back to this slide now. You can see the USD JPY. Let's assume the USD JPY is what? 1, 110.130. The volume simply means how many units of this USD JPY do I want to what? Purchase. How many units of this currency do I want to what purchase? So we have, in terms of lot sizes, we say once again, it's the unit of currency to be traded. We have the standard lot size, we have the mini lot size, we have the micro lot size, and we have the nano lot size. The a standard lot size is one lot size, which is equal to what? 100,000 units of that our currency. So what I'm simply saying is that what? We have a standard lot size, a mini lot size, micro and nano lot size. In terms of volume, in our MT4, when we are trading, we can decide to, okay, if I want to trade so, so, so units of currency, which is 100 units of this currency means one lot size, which is standard lot size. 100 or 10,000 units of a certain uh, uh, currency is 0 0.1 lot size, which is a mini lot size. And 1,000 unit of a currency is what? 0 0.01 lot size, which is a micro lot size. It simply means that if I was actually going to buy 110, 110.130, kindly guys, I hope you have your pen and paper. This will allow you to what? This will allow you to write these things down so you can visualize, yes, and be analytical with me. Actually, this whole concept we will be talking about this kind of mathematical, I know so, some basic arithmetics, but we got to understand this to make progress. So 1.0, 1, 110.130, hope you got that down. 110.130, 110.130, guys, hope you got that down. Let me get my calculator ready. Hope we got that down. Kindly one, 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 if you do. One, one, zero, point, one, three, zero. Kindly guys, do you got that down? Okay, I can see that's cool. So, now we want to buy 100 what? 100,000 units of our USD, what's the USD JPY? We want to buy 100,000 units of our USD JPY. What you see, what that, what that simply means is what? 110.130 times this our 100,000 units. Hundred thousand units, which is one lot size. And the interesting thing is that what is that each lot size. Let's say if you trade a standard lot, each pip movement is ten dollars. Let's say I want to go into a trade right now, and I decided to say, okay, I want to buy one lot size of Euro USD. I want to buy one lot size of Euro USD, and I want to move three pips. I want to buy one lot size of Euro USD and then move three pips. Each lot size for a single lot size, each pip movement is what? $10. So one standard lot size with three pip movement is going to be how many dollars, guys? One standard lot size is equal to what? Buying 100,000 units of a currency. And each pip movement of a lot size 
traded is ten ten dollars. Three pip movement is going to be equal to what price? Thirty dollars. Yes. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Yes. Now, I want to trade what? I want to trade zero point one lot size. I want to trade 0 0.1 lot size. And 0 0.1 lot size is 10,000 units of that currency. That means if my currency is now 110.130, I want to now buy 10,000 units of that, which is 110.130 times 10,000, which is going to be equivalent to what? 0 0.1 lot size. 0 0.1 lot size, which is our what? mini lots and each zero point each pip movement for a 0 0.1 lot size is one dollar the table says it all the table actually says it all it's one dollar so three pip movement for a 0 0.1 lot size is going to be what oh that's cool uh, I, mr ajiga i can see it mr idea i can see it mr Ibulu, yes i can see it yes so likewise for a micro lot size. So when you go to your MT4 and you want to like place a trade, when you select one lot size, you should know that you are buying 10,000 units of that currency. So if I was actually going to, if I was actually thinking of buying, okay, if I was actually thinking of buying Euro USD, if I was actually thinking of buying 1,000 units of Euro USD, which is Quoted at okay, let's say 1.22640. 1.22640. Is it okay for me to say that me buying 1000 units of this currency means me buying 1000 times 1.22640? Is it correct? If I want to buy, yes, 1000 units of this currency at 1.22640 is it correct for me to say i am buying 1.22 i'm buying it at the price of what 1.22640 times 1000 yes yes thank you mr bulu mr ade ajiga i can see you ade yes thank you so much i can see it so simply lot size is to what lot size allows you to go to buy what certain units of currency which are expected to what which is expected to be traded is the unit of currency expected to be traded whether you are buying or you are selling i want to buy which means i am buying a specific unit of currency right if i am selling i am selling a specific unit of the currency but let's note something that these values that i say for one lot size each peep movement is going to be ten dollars for uh, zero point one loss size, which is mini loss size. Each peep movement is one dollar. The other one ten. Micro is zero point one. Nano is zero point zero one dollar. This is an ideal case in the in the real sense. In the real sense, this couldn't be as such because it is dependent on your broker and dependent on the asset you are going to trade. You will find out that maybe Euro USD will not give you exactly ten dollar per pip. You might find out Euro USD might give you for a lot size per pip movement to be nine point eight dollar. You could find out maybe GBP USD giving you eleven dollars, but this is just an ideal case. So guys, I hope we understand this. I hope we understand this concept of lot size. Lot size is simply the unit of currency we want to trade. If Euro USD is 1.60353, me saying I need 100,000 units is what times, it means it is what times that value. Am I correct, guys? Do we understand this? Because I know this is not going to be new. This isn't going to be new to most of us here. Some are new, yes, I understand. For those newbies, kindly, those that are just here, please, if you don't, I would like to see a two. If you've understood, let's move. But the interesting thing is that we are just going to, we are talking about this. 
yes, theoretically at first, so you can understand the theory behind it. You should get an idea of what we are saying. I think God willing tomorrow, Mr. My the big man, Joel Lito, one of my colleagues here is going to take you on the word meta trader. Oops, 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 no audio. Kindly, can you hear me? Guys, can you hear me? Oh, kindly, Mr. Jude, Mr. Jude Martins, please check the connection from your side because I believe I'm good. Because I have to make sure I set my internet connection. I, I get set so I don't get interrupted, not at all. Okay, because tomorrow uh, there's going to be a session on the MetaTrader 4, which is the application, that software we use to trade. All this, where you get your, where you see the lot sizes, all and all, is going to be shown to you. But we need you to understand what, what it all means. Okay, so now, now we've understood our PIP. We know that our exchange rate is that is the you know that 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 is the value that is exchange rate is simply that rate which we let's say we have two currencies you have euro you have USD you need what okay let's use naira and dollar I have naira you have you have dollar so you want to change your dollar to naira so you need to know the exchange rate. I now tell you that one dollar is equal to five hundred naira. So the exchange rate from one dollar to naira, yes, is five hundred naira. So that is our exchange rate. So we have your pip now. If you, how do you determine? Sorry, how do you determine your pip value? Your pip value. Let's say you have any currency pair. You have a currency pair, and you want to determine your pip value. Let's assume we have our USD. JPY, I told you, just look at this example for goodness sake. We have 119.80. They simply did what? Neglect the pipette here. This example neglected the pipette, which is actually a fractional pipette. Thank you, I can hear. Okay, yes, thank you. So if we want to, to determine your PIP value, your PIP value is simply your PIP size. When we say your PIP size, if it's a JPY pair, I already gave you a formula for that. That is a 1% of 1% in price for a four decimal place is 0 0.0001. And for a two decimal place is what? 0 0.01. I already gave that standard. So when you say PIP size, you're actually talking basically in terms of 0 0.01 and 0 0.0001, 0 0.0001, yes. So your PIP value for any asset is going to be your PIP size divided by the exchange rate, which are those numbers you see by the right hand side of your MetaTrader for which will be experienced, which will be like, yes, exposed to tomorrow, which is that exchange rate of that uh, currency which you are trading time is your position size. Your position size here is also called your lot size, which is your units. Mr. Kletus, you can't hear me. Oh my God, what's happening to the network? Kindly guys, can you hear me? One, 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 if you can hear me. Okay. Mr. Adefemi can hear me. Kindly, I need more response. Oh, I can see, yes. Guys, audio is poor. Audio is poor. Kindly check connection from your side, please. Kindly endeavor to check your connection. Because as I am right here, I doubt there's an issue with my internet. I doubt, I doubt. So I was actually talking about PIP value. That if you wanted to calculate the PIP value, that means per PIP. How, how much per PIP of a certain currency pair? Example number one says you have USD JPY at an exchange rate of 119.80. Now I want to determine how many PIPs, how many dollar per PIP am I talking about here, which is for a lot size. So I said that what for this 
exchange rate JPY peg pairs, we are considering it what to the second decimal place, which is 0 0.01 divided by that exchange rate, which is uh, 119.80 times the position side. The formula says the formula, and this example says it all. I don't think we should have any problem here, which is going to be equal to eight dollars per pip. Just look at what I was telling you about what I, what I was talking about in that table. In our previous table here, we said that for every standard lot size is ten dollars. But when we actually calculated for what our USD JPY, it told us that what we got the cal calculation that for every pip movement for one lot size, which is hundred thousand units, is eight dollars. You can see it's not ten dollars. That is an ideal case. But in the real life, when you trade, it can't be ten dollars. Some might be, but it can't always be ten dollars. You can see this is eight dollars, not even nine, not even nine point five. The second quote, which is USDCHF at an exchange rate of one point four five five five. Now we can see that this is a currency pair that is to the fourth decimal place. So we use the one percent of one percent of change in price, which is our zero point zero 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 one divided by our exchange rate, which is already which has already been given, multiplied by one lot size, which is hundred thousand units. Yes, of course, you have to determine your lot, your lot size yourself. Yes, you have to determine your lot size yourself because it's also, because the concept of lot, lot size is important when you in risk management. Yes, you have to determine your lot size yourself because, okay, you, hope, you know, you can decide to open your trading account with $100, $200, $400, you understand? But then just imagine you have an account of $100 I, I don't think with an account of hundred dollars, depending on your leverage, we we'll still talk about it. Okay, 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 okay. Mr. Jacob has actually said so. Yes, yes, yes. You have to what? You have to determine it yourself. So basically, I'm just going to conclude that you are going to determine your lot size yourself. Yes, you will. You will determine your lot size yourself. Tomorrow, you will actually see how you will do that. Is this? Two decimal points applicable to gold. Gold, 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 gold. Gold is to the, to the two decimal place, right? Can you please do this? Gold. Okay, let me look at it. Okay, for gold. Okay, kindly give me a moment. Spot metals. Okay. Yes, it's also applicable. Exactly, it's also applicable. For gold, yes, 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 yes. Yes, it's applicable. It is applicable. It is applicable. Gold, yes. It is applicable. I think both gold and likewise crude oil itself. And crude oil itself, yes. So I hope you understand. I hope you understand. It's a two decimal point. Okay. You understand? Can you please do the same calculations on your same trading account? Of course, you could do the same calculations for a same trading account. Let's go back. When you say cent, your cent trading account is more like you trading, let's say, a nano lot size. Let's assume, yes, your cent trading account is more like you now talking about a nano lot size here. So what you simply do, and for nano lot size is simply a, a unit here is what? Unit of currency, which is for a 0 0.01, which is cent for your cent account. Just look at this, 0 0.01 cent. 0.0, 0 so just look at this, this is 0 0.01 cent. You have 0 0.01 cent, cent, right? So for a cent account, of course, you have your nano lot size, which is 0 0.01 lots. Number of units is 100 units. So when, once you just come here, if it's actually a cent account, instead, instead of now saying 100, 100,000 lot size, what you simply do is you just say it's 100, 100 lot size. Yes, that's just what you say. So I believe that this, our calculation here is what? This our, this our calculation here is good. And let me mind you, for you guys that are saying that so, okay, you say gold. Let me even make a correction for gold. It's not that gold doesn't have pips or what. The way we calculate the pips 
for Google is even completely different. Yes. The way PIP is calculated, PIP, the PIP for Google is not calculated like the way we calculate for EUUSD and the JPYs. No, it's not calculated like that. But I believe you that in the course of this program, we are definitely going to talk about it because all these calculations, there are simpler ways to do it. We've got uh, calculate PIP cal lot size calculators and all sorts. We are going to talk about that henceforth because the calculation for gold is not like all the you know the other pairs yes when, when you calculate it actually the value it gives you yes it's kind of actually different but i can uh, but yes it does apply it does apply can you it's applicable to gold yes it's applicable but when you are trying to calculate your watch your lot size for gold is completely different i hope you understand that mr boluatife kindly please I need a one if we are understanding this piece. So we've talked of pips, which is the smallest change in what price. Our lot size is the unit of currency to be traded. And our slide here has told us these types of lot sizes. We've got the units uh -huh, and their prices, what per pip, their per pip values. Kindly, guys, do we understand this? One, 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 please. One, 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 if we understand this. The thing is just let's understand the concept of pips, the concept of lot sizes, and take note of that table. Then this pip value, calculating the pip value, let's note calculating this pip value. Let's note it. you are going to be exposed practically to this theoretical concept when we start talking of the NT4. Hopefully tomorrow, you will actually get to understand more about this. And in subsequent classes, we'll get to understand all these calculations. Next time, we won't be doing these calculations by hand or mentally. We will have a calculator, some applications, some app, the tools that we've got that we do all of the all of those things now next on the topic we have our beat acts and our spread now in the forex markets we have what we call the beat you will hear of acts and spread I, I bet you that most of us have heard beat acts and spread somewhere besides i think the chat goddess yesterday was actually talking of uh how the broker makes make make, make how the broker make their money uh yes she was talking of, of spread but said tomorrow we'll do further do more about it so a bid when once we say bid in an in a layman's language bid is simply a price at which the buyer is willing to buy bid bid is what the price at which the buyer is willing to buy. So me and you are now the buyers. We want to buy certain units of currency. We want to buy so 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 unit of a currency pair. Right? Now the bid is what? That price at which me, the buyer, I am willing to buy that currency pair. The ask is the price at which the seller is willing to sell. Yes, so it simply means that in the market, we have buyers and we have sellers. Yes, buyers want to buy at a certain price and sellers want to buy at a certain price. So they must come into an agreement that yes, I agree to sell at a certain price and I will now say yes, I agree to buy, I agree to buy at that price at which you want to sell to me. Probably it's cheap. Probably it's expensive. It depends on who is doing the buying and selling. So, guys, I hope we understand. In a nutshell, what I'm just simply trying to say is that bid is what the price at which a buyer is willing to buy. It says it. Ask is what the ask price is what the price at which the seller is willing to sell. Hope we understand this. Let's just understand this. Don't think too much about it. Just know that B 
big. When you say there is a bidding, anywhere you hear, even the beauty change, when they go to CBN to get money, there's what they call bidding. They bid before they collect the money from CBN, the dollar. So let's look at it. Just look at this, the bid. Kindly one, 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 if you understand. Bid is simply price at which the buyer is willing to buy. It's it's self-explanatory. And what the ask price is the price at which the seller is willing to sell. It's just English. And I know we understand this. So the difference between the bid and the ask price the difference between the bid and the ask price is known as the spread. What do we mean by the spread? Is the difference between the bid and the ask price. Okay. Let's say dollar is what? Dollar is dollar is standard. One dollar equal to one naira. Okay, it's not okay, not one year. It was then, and there was a time. But let's say one dollar is equal to five hundred naira. Equal to five hundred naira. Let's assume I am your broker. I am your broker. Standard one dollar is equal to five hundred naira. And now me as your broker, I want to sell to you. So that we are now talking of you want to buy and I want to sell to you, which makes what? You are going to consider what? The ask price. Okay, I want to buy, but at which price is my broker selling? Me as your broker, I am now going to say my ask price, I am now going to be asking for, okay, you want to buy from me, right? I am now going to be asking for 505 Naira. Standard, the normal rate is 500 per dollar. But now I want to sell to you. I now say it's, the, it's what? It's 505 naira. You want to buy from me. You are now looking at the ask price. What is the price the broker is asking for? Am I okay with it? Yes. Then you buy. It's not good. Then you wait for a better price. And then if I wanted to buy from you, if me, I am your broker and I want to buy, let's say I'm the broker and I want to buy, I am now going to what? Bid at what? 495 Naira per dollar. Just look at it, 495 Naira per dollar. Standard is what? It's 500. So now I am the one who wants to buy, right? I must now look at what the price at which the buyer is willing to buy. I will now look at the bid. I want to sell. I want to sell it high. I want to buy, I want to buy it cheap. Everybody here wants to buy cheap and sell high. And that's exactly what happens in the market. You will know about that later. So basically I said that the bid is price at which the buyer is willing to buy and the ask is what the price at which the seller is what willing to sell and the spread is now the difference between the bid and the ask i think yes yesterday the chat goddess was saying the that the broker charges you no commission it doesn't charge you anything there's no commission when you trade but then the broker is also running a business so you can't just expect the broker to come into the market. You are buying, selling, they are managing your account and all sorts. You are operating on their platform and they can't be making money. No, it's a business they're actually running, but they don't pay. It's not commission. They don't ask you to pay so, so, so amount. No. When you enter a trade or you exit a trade, right? This spread is how is their own form of commission i'm not even it's not a commission but is there that's how they make their own money is that spread the difference between the bid and the ask is how they make their own money it's not a commission but it's their own form of commission they are not telling you that you have to pay so 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 amount no it's just the difference between the bid and the ask price on the quote i hope you understand this guys i hope you understand this time isn't by our side I can see we've like spent so much time here talking, talking, talking of pips and lot sizes. I hope you understand the concept of the bid, the ask, 
and then the spread and how they relate to one another. Kindly drop me a one 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 if you understood. A one 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 if you understood, please. Okay, Samuel, Mr. Samuel, okay. Oh, you might touch me. Hey, yes, we, she's actually my colleague. We've been there. See, right from FAP down to this point. Okay, Henry. Okay, Barbara, Mr. Brown. Kindly, if you don't understand, type a two. Because I know we've got new guys here. We've got new people here, people that are new to trading Forex, some that have never even heard of these terminologies, but these are terminologies that you would what, come across in this financial market. So we are trying to make you understand what they mean so that next time you hear B, you hear X, you hear spread, you hear PIP, you hear lot size. It shouldn't sound strange or new to you. At least, even though, even if you can't like, <laughs> even if you can't calculate to carry out all those complex calculations, it shouldn't be new. You should understand what the person is talking about or you should understand what's been said. Thank you guys for the one, 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 one. I haven't seen any two and I like the twos. I like the twos because if you don't understand, then you go back till you understand. But then there's going to be an open floor for you to ask questions later on. And I think there's the group where you could ask further questions, hopefully. Yes. So we said bid, ask, and spread. Just look at this. On the MT4, we've got something like this. You can you have your currency pairs to your left. I'm not going to go into details here. Uh, tomorrow's class will elaborate on this. So this is how you see your bid and your ads. Your bid and your ads. You will have your USDCHF, which is the first currency symbol. Then you have the bid, which is your 0 0.9149, okay? And then this is your 0 0.91424. You can see there's a difference in the value. Okay, now let's look at the bid and the ads. ads. Guys, let's look at the bid and the ads. The bid and the ads. I said what? Let's go back to the previous slide. We said that the bid is the price at which the buyer is willing to buy, and the ask price is what? The price at which the seller is willing to sell. Right? So, if I am going to buy from my broker, am I considering the bid or the ask for USD CHL? Look at my mouse. USD CHL, the first currency code. If I want to buy from the broker is actually in charge. You are buying and selling off their platform. There's a bid and a price code. There's a bid and an ask code. If I want to buy from the broker, what am I considering? Is it the bid or the ask? The broker, the price at which the seller is willing to sell to me and the what, the price at which the buyer is willing to buy. I will now want, I now, I now want to buy. I want to buy from the broker, which means the broker is what? Is selling to me. So what am I considering? Is it the bid or the ask, guys? Is it the bid or the ask? Yes. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, Mr. Patrick says ask, say he says ask. God's power is saying it's the bid. We have Ichidoze, okay, ask. Okay, Ogali saying, okay, ask. Henry saying, ask, okay. Actually, it's the ask. I want to buy. Yes, you are registered with a broker. I want to buy 100,000 units of a certain currency. I want to buy. So there must be a seller. I now want to buy from the broker. And from this previous slide, we say that the price at which the seller is willing to sell, who is the seller, is the broker. So I am now keen trying to look at what? I'm now looking at this value. Now I want to sell. I want to sell. I must now look at the price of the buyer. I am willing to sell so, so, so units of currency. What is my buyer saying? Still, it's my broker. 
The broker gives you what the bid and the ask price, the buy and the sell. So now we say that the bid, what the bid and the ask, right? Let's now look at this, which is higher for goodness sake. Now let's determine the spread. If I was actually going to trade this currency pair, right? Difference between the bid and the ask, which is going to be what? Ask minus the bid. So guys, let's look at 0 0.91424, okay, minus 0 0.91419. Let's please, let's subtract this. So we're only interested in 0 0.91424 and 0 0.91, okay, okay, okay. I've seen someone has already punched it, yes, yes. It's five, yes, it is, five points, five points, that is five points, but now, okay, let's determine, the, let's determine this in terms of pips, let's do, look at it in terms of pips, what I'm simply going to do is let me now do away with what, okay, he said five points, why is it five points? Because he added on to, he added the fifth decimal place to it, which is five points. Point divided by 10 is going to be equal to your pips. When you have five points and you want, when you have your number in points and you want to divide to pips, you simply divide it what, by 10. Simply what, divide it by 10. And you what, you get your pips. So now let's look at how many pips spread, but we are interested in the price movement. Let's look at this in terms of pips now. And uh, let's do away, let's kind of do away with this, um, the points. Let's talk of what, 0 0.9142. I, I don't want to make it complex. Let's make it easy. Do away with this fifth decimal, number, decimal place. And let's deal with 0 0.9142 and 0 0.9141. The pip is what? How many pips is that? How many pips is that? How many pips is that? Guys, I need an answer. Zero point, yes. Zero point nine one four two minus zero point nine one four one. We are only considering the fourth decimal place. I, I'm just discarding the fifth, which is that pipette, which is the fractional value, which is not too significant. It doesn't affect our trade that much. So to make it simple, it's one pip. So just look at this thing. Your broker is actually what? Your broker stands to get one pip. If you like, you should write, you should write 500 pips. Your broker is going to what? Receive just that one pip, one pip, one pip. That is how the broker make his money. The money the broker will make is one pip. It's actually one pip. It's one pip, not 0 0.1. It's one pip. Assuming it was five points, that five points that we talked about, if it was in points, we calculated our value, then we divide it by 10. You see that five value five we got, it was in points because we considered that pipit. But I'm now telling you that we should be talking of the pips. Let's not consider those that fifth decimal. It is going to confuse you. Let's restrict it to the fourth decimal place. That pip, you are not seeing it. When you just look at your axe and whatever, just cut off that pip part and just put it by the side. Chidoze, do you understand? Kindly, kindly, do you understand? Because I can see you are saying it's 0 0.1. Do you understand? Chidoze, kindly, do you understand one or two? If you've understood one, if you don't, two. Two, you don't understand. Let's go there. Let me make it simple for you. I okay. Why didn't why didn't approximate it? Why didn't approximate it? Approximate what? Sorry, God's power. I don't understand what you meant by why didn't approximate it. You wanted him to approximate 0 0.1 pip, or I don't understand.
Is there a way I can hear what you have to say? Okay. Uh, Mr. God's power. Okay, zero point. Why didn't I mean zero point? Okay, zero point nine one four one nine zero point nine one four one nine okay you okay are you saying that why didn't we approximate it to one is that it yes or no are you saying why didn't we approximate this value to one kindly to four decimal place oh I get what you are saying. I get what you are saying. You are actually saying that why didn't we make it 0 0.9142? Is that it? Why did yes? Okay. You know, in mathematics, do you believe me if I tell you that, like in engineering? and in the technical field and in the world of mathematics, in those engineering places, do you know that 0 0.11 and 0 0.12 can cause a disaster? If there's an analysis, something to be done, and it's supposed to be 0 0.11, and you say it's 0 0.12, it causes damage. And I told you that the fifth place is called the pipils. It is to ensure what accuracy, maybe before in the past it was, it could be yes, approximated to two. But you know that the approximation to two, to zero, zero okay, approximating this thing to 0 0.9141 and leaving it as 0 0.91419, which one is much more accurate? Can we answer that? 0 0.9141. 0 0.9142 and 0 0.91419. Which one is more accurate? The first or the second? Which one is more accurate? Mr. God's power. Kindly, guys, I need you to participate as well. 0. Point, okay. Okay, 0. Point is, yes, this is more accurate. Exactly. This is more accurate, of course. It's more accurate. But when you are actually taking, I think that that, that pipit, that pipit, it is more like you are talking of 0 0.00001. That one is a pipit value. It doesn't affect your trade. It is better for you to leave it than to take and approximate it. Okay, now let's say it is 0 0.91415. And we are trying to take the pot. And then just because the ending is five, you now approximate it to two. Do you know that the error there is bigger than the error of approximating this nine to two? The error there is bigger than this. And here you are talking of money. Maybe to us that are actually trading, this, uh, you might think that rounding up these values are not going to be significant. But to those big players, it is very significant. For those people that move huge amount of money, it's very significant. And I simply told you that the fourth digit, the fourth digit is our what? Is our pip. The fifth digit is our pipit, that fractional pip. So we are talking of pip. Why are you even going to that pipit? Forget about it. That's why I say discard it. We already have our pip. It is the fourth. The fifth one is a pip. It's a fractional pip. It is so small and so tiny. I think it should be almost about uh, one over how, how, how many? I think it's over, uh, one over 10. Yes, of it. So I'm not sure, but forget about it. That's the pip. Forget about it. We are talking of the standard movement in price. That movement, the smallest movement a price can make. The smallest standard movement a price can make. The pip is smaller than the pips, yes. But the smallest standard movement in price is what we are talking about, which is the pips, and that's the quad decimal place. Kindly, do you understand me now? Do you understand why I'm telling you to leave that pip alone? Because when you go to start all these calculations, you will end up you will end up meeting some kind of uh, you will end up uh, uh, trying to calculate some pips of some currency pairs, and you will get it, the whole thing mixed up, and we don't want that. Yes, and we determine this spread to be what one. And let me let you know that spread, talking of spreads, 
we have two kinds of spread. Your spread is actually dependent on your broker and that asset you are trading. Can you write this down? I don't think it's anywhere on this slide. Your spread is dependent on your broker. And at the same time, it is dependent on that asset which you are trading. Different assets got different spreads. I'm coming. Let me see the next slide. I think the next, there's a slide I've got here that talked about. I'm coming. Okay. 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 This, okay. Different, bro okay. different brokers tell, could, yeah, it's dependent on broker. Different brokers could decide to set their spreads differently. And apart from them setting it differently, the currency, different currency pairs will have what? Different spreads. So I say we have two types of spread. We have fixed spread and we have what? Variable spread. In the process of trading, as the market is active, a fixed spread is what? That spread that is fixed, that means all through the trading period, all through the trading period, your spread does not change. If your spread is one pip, it remains one pip. As the name implies, a fixed. But then if your spread is variable, okay, 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 I, we have actually taken so much time. If, okay, if your spread is what? variable, then you can expect that even within the interim of what? Interim of your trading, the spread could fluctuate from one, maybe some five minutes, three minutes time, two hour time, you could see it to two pips. So this is simply what? This is simply a quote where you have euro USD, you have 1.1051 slash 1.1052. This is your bid price to your left, your ask price to your right, and this is self-explanatory. We talked about this, they subtracted to get two pips, which is actually the spread. Next, we are talking of leverage. Leverage simply allows what? A trader to what? Control a larger position with a small amount of what? Actual trading capital. Leverage allows you to what? Use small capital, small amount of what? Capital to control a larger amount. This is why we, I think yesterday, the chat goddess, yes, was talking that, saying that the market, trading the market, we actually call it what? We say we are, forex trading is also termed as what? Margin trading, marginal trading. That is where you see you have only $100. You have $100, but you can use $100 to trade a size up to about $10,000. Yes, you use $100. You can see the coins. You just have one coin, but you are controlling many coins. And yesterday, the chat goddess actually talked about it. Where you're, where, when you register with your broker, you find out your legendary, your bro, you, okay, I have $100. And your broker asks you to select a leverage. You have leverage from 25, 50, 100, 200, 300, up to about 2,000. Some brokers, 1,000, 1,000, some give you 2,000. So if you have $100 in your account times $100 is what? $100 times 100, 100 leverage. Let's say your leverage is 1 is 200. So $100 times 100 as your leverage is going to be what? 10 what? 10,000. So it means you are using what? You are using $100 to control $10,000 in the market. So in a nutshell, that is what we are talking about with regards to what? The leverage. And we are here. Uh -huh, this is actually a good example. Margin is simply that, uh, th that is the, that is that particular amount you are using to what you, you, you want to use to trade, the amount you, you need to trade, which is $100. One ratio one simply means 100 times what? One, which is still 100. When you select a, a leverage of 10, you multiply your what? When you, your broker, you select a leverage of 10, you get your available margin to be 1,000, which means you are having what? You are using what? $100 to trade what $1,000. I believe guys, we understand. 
it's simple, it's simple, it's just there. It's, it's simple, leverage is just using a small amount, uh, taking a small amount, using a small amount, which is your actual amount to control a larger amount. And your broker gives you, allows you to, you know, select leverage. Okay, okay, okay. How does spread affect our trade? How does spread affect our trade? So when you say spread, I said that spread is actually the difference between the bid minus the ask price. I said that spread is simply the difference between the bid minus the ask price. So when we say spread, you say some brokers tend to give you what ridiculous spreads. Yes, so whenever you are choosing a broker, it's good that you know the broker you choose because you will end up finding out, you select, okay, there will be some brokers where you want to what? Trade and take 20 pips as a profit. And just imagine you didn't know and that broker is actually, is giving you a spread, a wide spread, the spread is wide. A spread of let's say, yes, exactly. One ratio, one is essentially no leverage no leverage one in ratio one is essentially no leverage so just imagine you want to trade 20 pips your tp is 20 pips and your broker is already telling you that uh, your the spread is 10 pips oh my god that that means you have to work half your tp half your tp have the distance from entry to your tp so you have to you, you need to know but actually when you trade when you, if you're a good trader, you don't even care about trade. Trade, you, you, you don't. Where spread, where does spread affect your trade is when the broker is giving you a wide spread. Where you find out that, okay, you need a bigger one. You, you, you need to move a bigger pips for you to catch significant profit. So always look for a broker that gives you tight spread. But when you're a good trader, spreads, they are just one pips, two pips, three, four pips. They are so small. When you're a good trader, you don't actually even mind spreads kindly. When you're a good trader, you don't mind spread. You don't let spread uh, bother you that much. Yes, please. Just watch out for brokers that have good spreads because some brokers tend to give you ridiculous spreads. And one ratio, one for our leverage here simply means no margin at all. I mean, no leverage, which means yes, no leverage at all. One ratio, one means no leverage. Let's make progress kindly. We are almost two hours in. Okay, this is simply calculating profit. Okay, I have my GBP USD. The example says it. I want to calculate my profit and loss here. I have my GBP USD quoted at 1.42031, which simply implies that one GBP is now equal to what? 1.4. 42031 USD because we'll talk about this in currency pairs. So just this one GBP equal to that, close it. We are only interested in the 1.42031. Using one lot size. Yes, using one lot size, we now do what? One lot size, which is equal to what? 100,000 units, we multiply it by 1.4 this. We now get our 1.42. Uh -huh. Price now moves to 1.42041. And one lot size is of that is one four two point comma zero four one. So our profit is going to be the what that price moved, which is the high minus what the low, which gives us ten US dollar, which is per pip we make ten dollar off of this trade. This is just a simple calculation. The slide actually says it. But we are out of time. We are running out of time. We don't want this class to be boring due to oversaturation. Don't want to get saturated. So margin. Margin is an amount from as given by the slide, as on the slide. Margin is an amount put aside to keep a trade open. Margin is the amount. Amount that is put aside to keep a trade open open. Assuming I want to open a trade of one lot size, I have $1,000. I want to open a trade of one lot size Euro USD. Maybe the amount, the broker is going to hold an amount of, let's say, $20. 
$20 is now going to be the amount that is going to be put aside to open that trade. So it's simply an amount out of your total, your capital. I have $1,000, I, $1, I want to place a trade. Then we have $100, $100 put aside to open a trade. It is like a collateral, which gives the broker that yes, the assurance that yes, you have what it takes to open this trade, to buy or sell, and continue in this trade. In case of losses, they know that you have equity to cater for those losses. That's simply it. And this is a formula for calculating margin, which is equal to the number of units. Our number of units is our what? That our lot size, our lot size in units. If you are trading one lot size, you are replacing the number of units by 100,000. If you are talking of uh, 0 0.1 lot size, you are replacing it with 10,000 over the leverage. When you are registered with your broker, what leverage did you select? Is it one ratio one, which is no leverage? Is it one ratio 100? Is it one ratio 200? Then that 200, that leverage, is it 200? Is it 100 or whatever is what you insert in the leverage to determine what the margin for that lot size? Okay, and margin requirements are in percentages. Different currency assets tend to have what? Different margins. Your margins are not constant. Different currency pairs will always tend to have what? Different margins. Different margins. And you can see here, this table was gotten from baby pips. That, uh, as you can just imagine, they say baby pips. It will keep you a baby forever. Don't mind them. So uh, you, you can see that the Euro USD has 2% margin requirement. That means if I have $100, uh -huh, margin requirement is 2%, which is $2, uh, depending on lot size, actually. Uh, no, lot size is also a factor to consider. You have your Euro GBP USD, 5% margin required to keep your trade open. Uh, you know, USD JPY, 5, 4%. This is just for illustration purpose. And these are some other formulas for what margin calculations. Some other formulas, your equity. Your equity is what? Your account balance. I have my account funded with $100. I place a buy trade. My equity is now my account balance plus or minus profits. If I'm in a profit of $10 and my initial deposit is $100, which means my equity is $110. If it's I'm in loss of ten, I'm in loss and it's ten dollars. Then my account uh, hundred dollars minus ten dollars, which is ninety dollars. Free margin is what equity minus margin. If I open a trade out of I have hundred dollars and I open a trade, and ten dollars for my hundred dollars was used as the margin to keep that trade open. That means I have a free margin of ninety dollars to open more trades. And your margin level, which is also in percentage, which can uh, the margin level, in, as I showed you previously, margin requirements in percentages is actually derived from here. The margin level, which is what equity all over the margin time is 100%. Equity divided by the margin all over 100%. That means what level of margin do you got? In percentages, it's what it gives you when you multiply it by 100. So guys, I believe we understand this. These are just calculations. You are, we are not going to be doing this by hand. We will never, me and you, will, none of us is going to do this by hand. We will never. It's just for explanation's sake that we need to like, you know, elaborate. But we will never do this by hand. Tomorrow you are going to see that all the, you are going to see what we are talking about. Tomorrow you are going to see all of this. Sorry guys, tomorrow you're tomorrow actually going to see what I'm talking about. Okay, next let's move to our currency pairs. We said that in the Forex market, what we are trading one currency quoted against the other, right? Kindly guys, do you understand? I need a 111 if you understand. Kindly, I need a 111 if you've understood. Oh, this one is getting so hot. Kindly guys, do you, can I see a 111 if you understand? 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now let's move on to currency PS time is in by our side. We can ask questions after this uh, session. We said that currency pair, any, this is any two currency being traded. Any two currency being traded because there must be an exchange. A and B must exchange. There's no way I will just be holding euro, I will be holding dollar and I will be saying I'm trading. It's a lie. It's not possible. I'm trading what? Okay, is it euro against the US dollar? Is it GPP against USD? Is it NZD, JPY? Is any two currencies being traded with one being quoted against the other? And you can see from my example below, example of what the currency pair that we have Euro USD where we have our what? Euro from the left hand side to always be our base currency. Anytime you have a currency, this is how currency is being quoted. Euro, USD, GBP, JPY, you always should know that the left hand side is your base currency. And the right hand side is always your quote currency. And your base currency is always one. The value that you see from the right hand side of your MT for those numbers are actually what? For the quote currency. That means how much of that asset do you require? How much, how much, how many units, how many, how much of that asset, how would you quote do you need to get one dollar of the base currency, which is one dollar? So basically, this is how currency pairs are represented. You just need to know we have euro USD, this is how they are represented. The left hand side is the base, and the right hand side is your quote. And now we have the classification of currency pairs. These currency pairs are classified into three. We have our major pairs, we have our minor pairs, and we have the call so-called exotic pairs. Yes, these are the three classifications. Now looking at the major pairs, the major pairs are called major pairs because they are the most actively traded pairs. Mostly in some books, you will find people saying the uh, major pairs are all those pairs that have USD attached to them. Now, uh, as you can see, Euro GBP here, and you would now ask me, Sports, sir, uh, but Ali, there is no USD attached to Euro GBP. My own definition of the major peers, when we say major peers are the most actively traded peers, which is those peers are liquid. There is heavy volume of buying and selling going on in the, with these peers. So basically me, I will classify major peers as what? The most actively traded peers. The most actively traded peers, highly liquid peers. And then, yes, you could now say, okay, someone will now decide to say, yes, there are those pairs that have what? The, what, the USD. <laughs> Just imagine. Okay, so we have what? Currency pairs that do not include the USD, which are our minor pairs. Minor pairs are currency pairs that do not, does not include the United States dollar. The United States dollar, actually, it is the what? I think, yes, it is It is actually the major economy in the whole world, yes, the, the world power, so, so called. So we say that the minor currency pairs are what currency pairs that do not include the USDs, which we can see is the NZD, JPY, AUD, CHF, CAD, JPY. I hope we understand, it's simple. Then we have our exotic pairs. Note that our minor pairs are also called crosses. Take this down, it's not here on the slide. The minor pair, currency pairs are also called crosses. They can be minor currency pairs or crosses, yes. So next we have exotic currency pairs. Exotic currency pairs are made up of one or one major currency pair made up of one major currency pair, which could be either the Euro, the United States dollar, or the pound, and which is paired with what? It's a pair made up of one currency pair, Euro, pound, or what? USD, paired with the currency of an emerging country or economy. 
like Brazil, Mexico, these are emerging countries. A big, a developed country and an emerging one. You can see USD, Poland, USD, ZAR, USD, MXN. Yes, we are good to go. Now, this is how currency is quoted. You, anytime you see Euro, USD equal to, this is how you will actually see, you see Euro, USD. Euro is the base currency, as I said, and USD is the code currency, which is equal to 1.17920, which means that what? One Euro is equal to 1.17920. Anyway, you just, this meaning, this is the meaning of these quotes. Whenever you see a currency being quoted this way, euro USD equal to one point this, 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 it simply means one euro is equal to what? One, seven, nine, two, zero. Even if it was, let's say GBP, JP, if it was GBP USD equal to 1.17, this, 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 it means that one GBP is going to be equal to 1.17920 USD. I believe, guys, we understand up to this point. Kindly, one, 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 if you understand, we are out of time. We've almost spent about two hours. I don't want us to take more than these two hours. I don't want us to be saturated. This is simply all basics. You will get to see what I'm talking of tomorrow, practically, on the MT4. OK? I see. I see. Now let's talk of long. In the forex market, we are actually doing two things. In the forex market, we are actually doing two things. It is either you are a buyer or you are a seller. We have people who are buying and we have people who are selling. If you are not doing any, then you are not part a participant. When we say buy in the forex market, buy the long buy is also called going long. When you hear someone in the financial industry saying what? If you hear someone in the financial industry saying long positions, which means buy positions, I am going long on my trade. I am going buy. I am going bullish. Long means your trade makes profit when the price is rising. Why am I going to go bullish? Why am I going to buy? I'm now going to buy cheap, what? To sell high. I am buying, anticipating that what? I'm going long, anticipating that the price is going to rise. I hope we understand that this is just simple. Long position means long, means your trade makes profit when you buy. But when you hear, where you say, you hear someone says, I am going long. Oh, what, what position are you in this trade? What's your position in Euro USD? I am long, which means he's buying. I am bullish, which means I am buying. This is an example of what? Long. This is a market, as you can see, the arrow that is going up. Let's imagine that we bought from the bottom. I am buying anticipating that the price will go up. So here I am bullish. Short means that your trade makes profit when the price falls. Short means what? You make profit when the price falls. Short position. So it's like, what's your position in Euro USD? And you say, Mr. Jerry, Lady Femi, Miss Oemata, what's your position in Euro? What's your, what's your position, Euro USD? I'm short. I'm shorting the market. I am selling. Yes, I'm going down. I am I am I am long. Yes. So someone is going to ask, how? Do you make profit in a what? In a falling market. Yes, you can understand that when you are buying, it's simply you buy cheap and selling high. Oh, you see? Yes, yes, she's long currently. Yes, Ms. Oyemata is actively trading. She's telling us that she's in a she's in long position now. And I'm sure she's making a heck of, heck of, heck lot of profits. Yes, I trust her, I trust her. Because she's she's very active. She's very active. She's also FAP, Forex Apprenticeship. Exactly. So when you buy, it's understood that what? You buy anticipating price gets higher, but when you sell, 
How do you make profit when you sell? Some people could be curious. Okay, I want to sell. Sell, let me just explain this sell. This is exactly how my mentor, TVHM, has also explained it to me in the past. Yes. That is just like, okay, I want to sell. Let's say a bag, right? A bag happens to be what? I, I, want, I, want, to, I want to sell. I want, I want to sell an asset to make profit. How do you sell an asset to make profit? As you are selling, how are you making profit? It is more like you are borrowing something from your broker and then giving it back later. Guys, I hope we understand. I am collecting a bag worth a thousand dollars from my broker or from Okay, let Oyemata, I'm collecting a bag worth $1,000 from Oyemata. I collect this bag for $1,000. I immediately sell the bag at that $1,000 to another person. And then the price suddenly what drops to let's say $100. That same bag I, I collected. And when I collected that bag, it, it's what, it was worth $1,000. But then suddenly it dropped to hundred dollars. So what do I do now? I buy back that bag, but now at a cheaper price of hundred dollars, give it back to my broker. I collect, collect. I collected the bag. My broker is not interested in anything. He's not interested in anything. So my my broker is not actually interested in anything but the bag which I borrowed, I should return it. So I now return to my broker the bag of what? $1,000, but I collected the bag, but now it's $100. I bought the bag and then gave it back to the broker. I now get to be a whole what? How much is my profit right now? I collected the bag of $1,000. The price, I, I sold it in daily for $1,000. It now reduced to $100. I bought it back at $100, gave it back to the broker. How much profit have I made, guys? How much profit have I made? Kindly, let, let's move on, let's move on. By 10 o'clock, we should have wrapped everything. Yes, $900. You've made $900. It is like you are borrowed from your broker and simultaneously, you borrowed and in, simultaneously sold it. Waiting for it to go down, you bought back, gave it, you paid the debt, you paid the debt and you had your profit. Yes, $900. And this is an example of what? A shorted market or sell or bearish market. Let's assume I'm, I'm at the top, I'm selling. Yeah. So I believe that, guys, we understand the concept of pips, leverage, bids, ads, spreads, margins. Huh? Do we understand these longs, shorts, currency pairs? the way currency is being quoted. Guys, kindly, kindly, do we understand this? Kindly, I need a one, 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 if you understood. And this brings us to the end of the program. Thank you. And see you in the next session of what? The B minus zero, zero, three. So guys, do you understand what we've done tonight? If you've got a question, kindly, by eight or by ten o'clock, I, I want to wrap up. By by ten o'clock, I should have wrapped. We should have wrapped up and all gone to you know our respective leisure activities which we do at night. Some are going back to their computer screens to continue trading. Some are going to revise, but I advise that we actually revise this before the next class. You should revise this and always try to form connections with whatever is going to be taught next. When in tomorrow's class, you should ask, what show me what is what, what long is all about? Where do I see pips? What do you mean by lot size? Spread ads, bid ads. You understand? Ask. We are talking of leverage. Margins. They should you ask. So kindly guys, is there any question? Any question guys, any question?
Somebody is writing on my screen, I can see. Please, who is writing on my screen? Somebody is annotating. Stop that, please. Kindly, if you all understood, let me get a good one, one, one. Good one, 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 and to end this class, let me hear something, okay? Looking forward to the practical application tomorrow. Yes, 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 because I know this, this part is very technical. This part is very technical. It's very technical and mathematical, but hopefully you will get to understand it by seeing it tomorrow. And subsequently, you will, you will not need to carry out any hand calculations as we go on in these lessons. You will actually, once in these sessions, you are going to get software, tools, that will allow you to easily compute all these stuff. So you don't even need to blink. So guys, can I see your comments, please? Can I see your comments? Comments, please, kindly. I would really appreciate that kindly, please. Yes, guys. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And this brings us what to the end of the program. And Thank you so much. It's not easy, but yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad to have you all. And God willing, more, more explanations and more stuff to come. Good night. Take care of yourselves. And bye-bye.